Good day everyone! Quick info of the day. Do you know who is the 12th President of the Philippines? He is Fidel V. Ramos, popularly known as FVR or Eddie Ramos. He was a Filipino general and politician who served the Philippines from 1992 to 1998. And at that time, he was the only career military officer who reached the rank of five-star general. Fidel Ramos was born on March 18, 1928 in Lingayen, Pangasinan, and grew up in a Singan town during his childhood. He married Amelita Martinez and together they had five daughters. During his early life, Ramos went to the United States Military Academy at West Point where he graduated in 1950. And during his stint at the Philippine Army, Ramos founded the Philippine Army Special Forces. Now, proceeding to his contributions and achievements. Here are his contributions. Starting with the Philippine Mining Act, in March 1995, former President Fidel V. Ramos signed into law the Philippine Mining Act or Republic Act No. 7942 which was designed to revive the mining industry and attract more foreign investment by defining the agreements for mineral exploitation and provide the requirements for acquiring mining rights. This act shall govern the exploration, development, utilization, and processing of all mineral resources. No ancestral land shall be open for the mining operation without prior consent of the indigenous cultural community concerned. And according to the CPA Philippines Cordillera People Alliance Post, as a law liberalizing the mining industry, the Mining Act was hailed to boost the country's economic growth. The law was also hyped to bring rural progress and development, especially in communities hosting large-scale mining corporations. Moving on to the next contribution of the late President Fidel B. Ramos, Stand Up, also known as Science Technology Agenda for National Development Act of 1993. It includes four Republic Acts, namely RA-8293, Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, RA-7459, Inventors and Invention Incentive Acts, RA-7687, Science and Technology Scholarship Law of 1994 And lastly, RA-8439, Manya Carta for Science and Technology Personnel It includes Iloilo Pag-asa Complex and DOST As a matter of fact, it aims to focus to make a progress in our country which is the Philippines to become an industrialized country In addition, it formulates advances in high-quality education to make, the day, to make the nation grow and to become a better one. With that, it builds a lot of activities, programs, policies, scholarship, which help shape the nation through these aspects. It molds every individual through leadership, which can help the country to make everything easier and accessible through science and technology. Next contribution of our former president Fidel V. Ramos is the Balik Scientist Program. Here are the objectives of this program. So Balik Scientist Program was established in 1975 to encourage overseas Filipino scientists, professionals, and technicians to return or reside in the Philippines and share their expertise to accelerate the scientific, agro-industrial, and economic development of the country. The program was revived and instituted under the Department of Science and Technology on October 1993 by our former President Fidel D. Ramos through Executive Order Number 130. So the purpose of this program aimed to strengthen the scientific and technological human resources of academic, public and private institution in order to hasten the flow of technologies and stimulate the development of new or strategically important technologies. One of President Fidel Ramos' contribution to STS is the telecommunication sectors. He signed two executive orders and one Republic Act that enables the Filipinos to use telecoms nationwide. The first one is Executive Order No. 59 in 1993. This order was meant to encourage interconnection among telecom carriers. The second one is Executive Order No. 109 or the policy to improve the provision of local exchange carrier services in 1993. Its main objective is to improve the provision of telecommunication service 
in unserved and underserved areas in the country. And lastly, President Ramos signed the RA-7925 or the Public Telecommunications Policy Act of the Philippines in 1995. This law aims to open the sector to more private players and improve the provision of more telecom services at fair and reasonable rates. It also prohibits a telecom company from engaging in both telecommunications and broadcasting. Because of these laws, today there are now at least 10 national carriers actively engaged in the business of providing telecommunication services nationwide. The Philippines Department of Energy Filipino Kagawaran ng Enerhiya abbreviated as DOE is the Executive Department of the Philippine Government responsible for preparing, integrating, coordinating, supervising, and controlling all plans, programs, projects, and activities of the government related to energy exploration, development, utilization, distribution, and conservation. The Department of Energy was created by then President Marcos as he issued Presidential Decree Number no. 1206, which created the Ministry of Energy and attached the National Power Corporation and Philippine National Oil Company to this new agency. The ministry was abolished during the regime of Corazon Aquino. During the regime of President Fidel V. Ramos, the department was created by virtue of Republic Act No. 7638, otherwise known as the Department of Energy Act of 1992. The department was vested additionally powers and functions under pertinent energy and power. Fidel V. Ramos believes that science and technology was one of the means wherein the Philippines could attain the status of new industrialized country, and I see during his term he was able to establish programs that were significant to the field of science and technology. Next contribution of Fidel V. Ramos is the Clean Air Program or Comprehensive National Air Pollution Program. The Executive Order Number 446S. 1997 works with the elimination of using lead gasoline, which affects virtually every part of the body recognized as a new toxin, with deleterious effects on the intelligence of human being. Promotion of using lead-free gasoline. So the program is conducted in order to form formulate a comprehensive national air pollution program that will be implemented by the government through proper delegation and effective coordination of responsibilities and activities. Encourage cooperation and self-regulation among the citizens and industries through the use of market-based incentives. Focus primarily on pollution prevention rather than the control and provide for a comprehensive air pollution management program. This includes the establishment of a funding or guarantee mechanism, working up and environmental degradation as well as compensation for personal damages.